War Games! That's right. It's time. It's time to talk about War Games. Survivor Series 2022. Survivor Series War Games. Whatever. I'm going to call it Survivor Series 2022. War Games should not be part of the title. I know it's in the, in the thing, but it's, there's too, it's too much. It's too much when they say Survivor Series War Games. Survivor Series War Games. It's just it's too much. We're going to talk about this. And, uh, yeah, I know there's some people out there who prefer the traditional Survivor Series matches. but And they could have still had at least one. Because I, I, I thought that they are going to have like one War Games match and then one that's a traditional Survivor Series. But no, there's two War Games matches and none of those. I thought was interesting because there was ways to do it. You could have done like AJ Styles in the OC. AJ Styles, OC, Rey Mysterio, and um, Ricochet. Or Braun Strowman. And Braun Strowman on all the different shows, but put them together. Versus uh, the. What are they called? <laughs> Judgment Day and Walter. Or someone else from Raw. I don't know. I don't know, but you could have done it. I guess. But no, this was fine. The, the War Games matches. I always liked the War Games matches. I brought it back. I also liked the back in WCW. I was a WCW kid growing up for a little bit until the finger poker doing happened. My mom's like, nope, we're done watching. So, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Hulk Hogan. You're welcome, brother. I wasn't... Never mind. Uh, so, anyway. Yes, only five matches, which makes me think of NXT's, but it's Triple H, so it makes sense, though, because you're going to spend a lot of time with the War Games matches, so... Yeah, and we did start with War Games. I did like how they had Ozzy Osbourne in the... You know, uh... I forgot the name of the song, though. It's a Black Sabbath song. Uh... But, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, that witch is that black mass is. I love that song. And I like how they had Ozzy in the opening. That was kind of cool. But we did start off with the first, the females, the women's, as they call it, the women's, uh, war games match. And it was Bianca Belair, uh, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Mia Yim, and... And Becky Lynch versus Demi Sittala, uh Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. And, uh, okay, let's talk about this. I've been talking this for a while. So, I, I, Big OT and I watched Raw this past Monday, and there was some confusion because I would, I heard Tamiya Yim called Meechin, but then on commentary they were saying Yim this, Yim that. And I'm just like, well, what is it? Meechin or Mia Yim? It turns out. It's both. Apparently, Meechin is a nickname that the, the girls in the back call her. It's Korean for fire, fury, or something like that. I don't know. And so, someone misunderstood that and thought that was her name because that's what Bianca was calling her, and I was confused. So they called her Mia Chin. No, it's still Mia Yim, but she was announced as Meechin. Mia Yim. Just, just call her Mia Yim. I don't know. The name is kind of confusing, but yeah. So Bianca and Dakota Kai start off the match. Alright. And right now, I'm going to tell you right now, the whole who gets uh, the advantage. It uh, It's Buckus because neither of the teams that got the advantage won the match. Because in this one, the heels got the advantage and the faces won. So I don't understand what the point of that was. And then later, the ones who didn't get the advantage lost. So I don't understand the point of it being so important which team gets the advantage because it, it, it just, it, no, it all amounted to buckets because those teams didn't win. So yeah, we start off with the court guy. And uh, Bianca Belair, and of course, 
the bad guys had the uh, advantage, so in comes Eosky, predictably. And so they're going head-to-head, toe-to-toe with Bianca. And I felt like this was a little... Like, they've done a good job of showing that Bianca Belair is strong. She can hold her own. But she's getting her ass handed to her here. And I felt like she should be dominating those two. I know War Games is like, okay, you got to be down. and like, But she could have dominated at first and had them both on the ropes until eventually it, the two-on-one thing gets to him before the next person, which was Asuka, comes down to the ring to help. And Asuka is in there and she's young. Her, I don't know what their obsession, Dodi's obsession with having the two Japanese women yell at each other in Japanese. And I, I understand. They they understand what they're saying. And the people who are Japanese or speak Japanese can understand what they're saying. But us Americans who have no idea how to speak Japanese except for a few words like konnichiwa. I know more than that. I can't think of any on top of my head. Konnichiwa, Ohio, uh, Sayonara. That's about it. Uh, Big LT would know more. Uh, but, yeah. They're just speaking Japanese and it's all coming out. Like, <laughs> Sorry. And you know what? It's okay, though. Because I would rather them be yelling in Japanese and them knowing what they're saying. As opposed to, like, uh, Gary Iglesias said in his stand-up about Canelo, right? About how when Canelo is on the microphone in Spanish, he sounds like a threat. But when he tries to say it in Amer- in, in English, he's all, I am going to kill him, and he is going to fall. You know, and I've seen it before where they speak in American. Asuka is a great example. She tries to speak in English and it it doesn't sound right. When she's yelling in Japanese, you get you get that, oh shit, she's angry, she means it, you know what I mean? So that works. That works. But I don't know what their obsession with keep on doing in that is. They've done it a couple times now, and it's like, okay, okay, you get it, you get it. So, yeah, and then they do have Oscars yelling in Japanese most of the time. So, I guess it works. They should have, like, subtitles for us people who don't speak Japanese so we know what she's saying. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. And so, next is uh, Bailey. She comes out. And, uh, right? No, Nikki Cross. Excuse me, I forgot about her. Nikki Cross comes out and she goes for the weapons, which, yes, I've heard about, like, people say, oh, why do you need weapons when you have the cage? But it's just more fun, I guess. She gets, like, a trash can lid and some, uh, Singapore canes or candlesticks, whatever you want to call them, and does, and does that, you know. Next is Mia Yim comes out to the ring and there's some throwing around, but, you know. Uh, and... There's something I'm going to talk about in both matches I think is completely stupid. The commentators keep saying, the match doesn't start until all of the competitors are in the ring. Then why aren't they just standing there waiting? If the match doesn't start until all the competitors are in the ring, then technically they should just be standing there for the three-minute increments and wait for the others to get in the ring. Because the match hasn't started, there's no need for them to be fighting now, is there? It's absolutely stupid. That phrase, the match does not start. Then why are they fighting? It doesn't make any sense. You need you need to fix that for next year. You do this again next year. Get rid of that. Because it's absolutely stupid. And they say it in the man's one too. It's absolutely stupid. And it doesn't get better. Rhea Ripley is next. Right? She comes in and she's like, house of fire. And then Becky Lynch comes in. Right? And like, Rhea Ripley comes in. She like, dares everyone apart. And then Becky comes in. And they were calling her the man here. So I think the big time Bex thing is gone. And she's the man again. Because I saw a clip from from SmackDown. And she came out with the man Titan Tron. So I think she's back to being the man. So that works. Uh, and yeah. Uh, the Bianca Belair's team won. So 
yeah, there was some pretty good spots. To be honest, I was cooking dinner at this time, made some spaghetti, so I didn't see the whole thing. But I do know that it ended when with a table spot, and Dakota Kai was pinned by Becky Lynch. So, yeah. But yeah, it was pretty good for a beginning War Games match, but they need to stop because once all the competitors got in and they're like, let the War Games begin! Why are you saying that now when they've been fighting each other the entire time? It just, it, it, that doesn't make any sense. The sentence, the match doesn't, cannot start until all the competitors are in. And I get what they're trying to say is that no pinfalls can take place until they get in. But to say that the match doesn't start makes no sense because the match is going the entire time. If the match didn't start till then, then they should just stand there on different sides of the of the ring and wait till everyone gets in. Because that it just doesn't make any sense to me when they say that. Okay. Next, what was next? It was Finn Balor and AJ, I think. Yeah. Finn Balor and AJ Styles was next. And look, this was the start. There was. Two booking decisions in this uh, show that I had a problem with. Because to me, it didn't make any sense. Alright? <clears throat> and this was the first one. So we had AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. The clear winner of this should have been Finn Balor. And I know people are going to say, oh, but Scotty, AJ Styles hadn't won a singles match in many years. I don't care. Finn Balor, if if Roman Reigns can be a leader of his faction and not lose a match, then Finn Balor should also get that same treatment. Finn Balor should have won this match. Plain and simple. He should have won. Whether there were shenanigans or not, he should have won this match. But, no... AJ Styles won, and again, I was making dinner, so I didn't see the whole match, but I know that that uh, there was a phenomenal forearm, I heard phenomenal forearm, and then one, two, three, and then AJ's music played. So I know that AJ won by phenomenal forearm, and I did see that the Judgment Day and the OC were brawling. Look, Triple H, enough with the brawling. Clearly you haven't learned your lesson from the NXT days. NXT had way too many brawls, and it was heavily criticized for that. And you're doing it again. We don't need to see a brawl all the time. I think, well, this was the only one on the show, but still, enough with the brawls, okay? It's too much. One brawl a show, maybe. So this was fine. But just, come on. You rely too heavily on the brawls. You did that in NXT, and there was complaints, and he still hasn't learned. You don't need a brawl every time. About some storytelling. Come on. This was fine, though. But, yeah. Finn Balor should have won. That's all I'm saying. Next, we got the worst match of the night. Shotzi. Uh, versus. Ronda Rousey. And it stems from the fact that. Ronda Rousey doesn't know how to sell shit. Alright? She doesn't. And, like, Shotzi. Shotzi's a good performer. And Ronda is decent. But she still doesn't have the chops. Also, don't like the fact that they had to rely on on Shanna Baszler to be involved with this. I understand she's sort of with Ronda, and I think that the reason she's in there is to kind of help Ronda, because Ronda doesn't have that, like I said, the selling thing down. So I don't know. There was a spot in which they fell into some fans, which were obviously plants, but it looks so delicate, like this, into the crowd. And then... There was a move where Shotzi went to hit a DET onto the ring apron, and Ronda sold it wrong. Where she kind of just flipped off the rope. She barely even hit the the apron. And yeah, the match ended when Ronda hit the what is it called now? The it was called the Rowdy Slam before. And now it's called the Piper's Pit, where it's the it's the very bad and very botched. It basically, it's a, it's a, it's like the attitude adjustment. It's a Death Valley driver, but she 
swings them around down. It's kind of, I think it's supposed to be her version of the F5, but not completely. It's called the Piper's Pit. It just doesn't work. It looks stupid every time she does it. And then, but, and she does that and then puts the arm bar on. And I'm like, and then she does this thing where she points, I think it's Shanda Basil off screen and goes, this is for you. And I'm just like, oh, I need to do that. She puts them in there and shots, shots you tap right away. And if you're trying to build shots, you why let her struggle. Let her struggle with it at first and then finally tap. I, I, I never get it when you have these matches and by submission and as soon as they put them, move on. Why not let them struggle with it? It looks absolutely stupid when it's like, okay, gotcha. She could, she would barely experience any pain at that point. She just put her arm in and all of a sudden, no, let her struggle. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. And it was the worst match of the night. And this wasn't the other booking in the system. Because we have the triple threat match. Triple threat match. It is. Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, and Austin Theory for the United States Championship. And this was the other booking decision that I didn't like. Especially with the context of what you were saying here. You kept, you've been saying for weeks. 10 years of Seth Rollins in WWE, which it's not, by the way. Seth Rollins has been contracted with the WWE since 2010. He was in FCW and then the early NXT stuff. So, no, just because he showed up, they need to stop that. I'm sick of this. Especially with Triple H's new edict of acknowledging NXT. They say, oh, Seth Rollins, Owen Reigns, they first appeared with the Shield at Survivor Series. No, they didn't. They were in NXT. And Seth Rollins has been acknowledged before as the first ever NXT champion, yet they say Survivor Series is their first appearance in the WWE. NXT is a part of the WWE. You cannot ignore that, and I'm sick of them doing it. And you think Triple H wouldn't ignore it, especially now where he carries storylines from NXT over the WWE, but they still don't count it. Seth Rollins has been with WWE since 2010, not 2012. It counts. So no, it's not 10 years. It's 12 years. Learn how to count. But with all that 10 years of Seth Rollins bullshit, he loses. He even takes the pin. And yes, it's a fluke pin. Austin Theory basically won by accident, but yeah. And there's some good stuff in this match. Lashley almost had the match won, and then Theory pulls him out because... Hey, he did it to him. Not really necessary to do, but yeah, we got to show that. And then Rollins went to do that uh, Falcon Arrow thing, but Lashley hit the spear. And for some reason, was unable to go for the pin because Austin Theory landed on Seth Rollins and got the one, two, three. And Lashley didn't do anything. And yeah, Austin threw one, one by a fluke. And if you're going to have Austin Theory win, can it be definitive? I felt like he should have pinned Bobby Lashley because that would have made sense. Lashley's the one that cost him, so he should have cost him and pinned him. It would make sense. And Rollins should have not been pinned at all, especially if you're building up the bullshit of 10 years of Seth Rollins, even though it's only been 12. Even though it's been actually 12, but you know. But if you're building that up, why have him take the pin? And no, him accidentally getting pinned by by Austin Theory doesn't count. He still took the pin. It was still clean, so it doesn't make any sense. But we got the main event, and I said in my uh, my haul video, which you're probably gonna see after this, to be honest. But I meant to never something with Survivor Series. Uh, one of my people have on YouTube, it was a great one actually, posted, I said this, I'm sick of YouTubers putting spoilers in their titles just so they have a headline for people to watch the video. I'm sick of it. You should not put spoilers in for a video at the thing. Like, like the headline for the great ones, Sammy Zayn betrays Kevin Owens. Why put that in your headline? 
there might be people who haven't seen it yet. Like I didn't hadn't seen it yet, and now that was spoiled for me because it popped up in my notifications. Thanks a lot, great one. And again, I was spoiled on Becky Lynch coming back because uh, that was the thumbnail for the ups and downs for SmackDown. Don't put spoilers in your thumbnails or your titles. Please, stop it. I know why you do it. You do it to get the views. But that also is going to turn away people from the views because they're going to be pissed you just spoiled something for them. That's why I put the title of what I'm watching, like what I'm reviewing, excuse me, like a movie I'm reviewing, like say, uh, Pretty in Pink Review. Spoilers. Big letters. I haven't reviewed this yet, but I'm just saying, I'm not going to be there, just sitting there. But that was the first one I grabbed. That sort of thing. I'm just saying. But, yeah, this turn was spoiled for me. I already knew it was coming. So with the Bloodline versus the Brawling Brutes team with Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. And the whole story here was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are friends. But, like, even, even if it didn't make sense to me, I'm like, what do you mean he turned on them? They're not even on the same team. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, Wait, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens aren't even on the same team. How can he turn on him? Well, I understood. It's not exactly turning on him. But I get what they're trying to say. So, this starts. And, again, the good guys have the advantage, but they lose. So, the whole teams getting the advantage thing means buckus. Because neither of those teams won. So I don't know what the point of that was, but... We start off with, uh, with Jey Uso and Butch in the ring fighting each other. And they're going at it. And they're beating the hell at each other. And uh, next comes in Ridge Holland. Because the good guy's got the one. So he comes in and he's doing it in there. Got the advantage against Jey Uso. Three minutes are up. And Jimmy Uso is going to come out to help his brother. Roman Reigns goes, nah. And has Sammy go out and help him. And that's the first problem. Is they're going after each other and everything. And they're helping. But the two can't get along. Because Jay has these problems with him. Which you think would have been solved by now. We're going to get to that. But yeah. And then. Uh, uh, the next one out was. Uh, was it Kevin Owens? No, it was it was Drew McIntyre, I think. Drew McIntyre came out, and so it was three on two, and then out came then out came Jimmy Uso, came to the ring, and Jimmy Uso got the table, and now Sami Zayn and Jay Uso are going to go, who's going to set up the table? I don't. It doesn't matter. But they're arguing. In comes Kevin Owens, who of course is like, oh, can he and Sami coexist? And they're staring at each other. And I did laugh at this, where they're staring at each other, and Ruth Holland is like. Why are you staring at each other? Just grabs Sami Zayn. <laughs> like, hey, no staring. Grabbed him. Uh, uh. So, Chico is next. He comes in and just wrecks everyone on the opposing team. Then Sheamus is last, which I feel like Drew McIntyre should have been last. Maybe it's like the leader of the stables because he's the leader of the Brawl and Brutes. But still, Drew McIntyre is the strongest of those, right? The higher overall in WWE 2K22. So, yeah, he should have been last. But... In comes Sheamus, and he starts fighting. Then it's time for the Tribal Chief to come out. And again, he gets in. The door closes. Let the war games begin. And again, I have to say, if the match didn't start till everyone was in the ring, why weren't people just standing there waiting for everyone to get in the ring then? Because the match didn't start, they didn't need to fight. They could just sit around playing tiddlywinks, tiddlywinks or something. Statement does not make any sense. At all. But yes, and so they just start laying waste to each other. And then we get the moment. Where is Sami Zayn's allegiance? Because there was a whole thing earlier where he was talking to Kevin Owens on SmackDown. Jey Uso saw him and Jey Uso confronted him about it. He's like, no, I didn't talk to Kevin Owens. So he lied to him. And there was a thing where uh, Jey Uso tattletailed to the tribal chief. Jimmy was talking to Kevin Owens. And then Sami Zayn admitted, yeah, I was talking to Kevin Owens. Well, he was talking to me. I was listening. So he didn't really talk, you know. So here, is he going to side with Kevin Owens? Is he going to side with the 
with the bloodline, and he kicks Kevin Owens in the in the balls, right in the balls. Turn turns on him, not really. How many times has Kevin Owens turned on people? Come on, but <clears throat> kicks him in the balls, and so yeah, and then. He goes into the corner like to do a, a Huluva kick. He looks at Roman Reigns. Roman nods to him. Hits the Huluva kick. And then picks him up. He, he has like a, like a hug thing or whatever. And he flops him down. And he signals to Jey Uso. Hits the Uso splash. One, two, three. The bloodline wins. And Sam and Jey Uso embraces Sammy Zayn. So everything is okay now. Until... Next Friday, where they retcon it because I don't know. They seem to have like Jey Uso always hate no matter what, and I feel like they're gonna do this. And then come Friday, Jey Uso gonna be like, Oh, hey, we ain't cool, Us. I was just happy we won. Something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but it was predictable. Should have been a clean sweep for me because Finn Balor should have won. And Seth Rollins should have retained, or at least not gotten pinned. If they were building this 10 years of Seth Rollins, even though it's 12. You know, I don't know. But, yeah. But the show was fine. The show was fine. Uh, the War Games matches lived up the hype. But, like, the rest. Shotzi versus Ronda. Eh, kind of, I wasn't, like, it, it didn't disappoint me because I had low expectations to begin with. But, yeah. It was fine. So, I'll give it the show a B, I guess. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on Survivor Series? Oh, guys! Leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.